Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some very cool spice in the Open Ultra League, a level 50.5 XL Turtonator. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Andy5060, so many thanks for the battle submission. Turtonator has a pretty cool typing. It's a fire dragon type, so it has some very interesting coverage into the Open Ultra League. But it does require 296 XLs to power up, so it is a very difficult Pokemon to obtain. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's check out XL Turtonator in the Open Ultra League. Hopping to the first match, picking up a bit of a tricky lead for the Turtonator, leading Turtonator into Giratina. We're going to see a save switch into the Shadow Polyrath. Opponent is going to bank energy on the Giratina and send in their own Polyrath. But by doing so, the opponent is basically just forfeiting switch advantage here, as this is just too big of an energy advantage in the mirror for the opponent to win switch, especially after the attack drop. Opponent is going to go for the Icy Wind. They do not want to risk Scald not getting a debuff. Scald number two being fired off by the Shadow Polyrath. That will be shielded up by the opponent, and that does not get the debuff. This is going to be a bit awkward. We are going to see a shield now on the Icy Wind. And now it's going to be a race here. Farming up and getting the counter down on one HP. Going for the Icy Wind, but the opponent anticipating that sends in Registeel. But winning switch advantage is absolutely massive here, as Turdinator, of course, is going to do extremely well. Opponent sends in the Giratina. They're firing off energy. Turdinator is going to be hit with an Ancient Power, but it does tank that pretty well. Opponent could have gone for a Dragon Claw, but trying to fish for a boost, but the boost does not happen. The Dragon Pulse connects. That does big damage to the Giratina. And now in comes Galissapod to absorb energy. The opponent is going to fire off another Ancient Power, and again, they are unsuccessful in their quest for a boost. Giratina firing off one final Ancient Power, Galissapod barely able to withstand the damage. Back in comes the Registeel. Registeel is going to look and try and lock on down the Galissapod. We do see the defense drop here from the Liquidation, and the Galissapod refusing to get KO'd, able to make another Liquidation. That is going to connect. The Switch Clock not yet up, but we see a second defense drop here. And now, Turtonator is going to commit the shield as the Focus Blast is thrown, and Turtonator gets the farm down and takes the win. Hopping into the next match, hitting Turtonator into Ampharos. Great lead as the Volt Switches are resisted. Opponent is going to save switch into Skeledurge. Turtonator continuing to farm energy. Could have gone for a Dragon Pulse to deny the opponent the full sneak, but instead, just going to let the Shadow Ball come through, bank 100 energy for later, and then send in Galissapod. Much like the Turtonator, Galissapod can only be hit for neutral damage here. The opponent will go for the Disarming Voice. Galissapod is going to farm a very nice charge attack timing and fire off the Liquidation. Liquidation is going to pick up the knockout. Opponent can sit in the Ampharos, but due to Galissapod over farming, it should be able to tank two Volt Switches and make it to the Liquidation. Volt Switch number one, Volt Switch number two, and able to make it to the Liquidation in the middle of the third Volt Switch. That does very nice damage. The opponent, I don't know if they're lagging here or what's going on, but they are... Okay, there we go. I I wish I knew what that was. Um, couldn't be sending in the Polyrath. Polyrath is going to be hit with a Brutal Swing. That's not going to do a whole lot of damage. And in the back, it is Cresselia. So the opponent was pretty core broken by the Turtonator. Turtonator with so much energy here is just going to make it very, very difficult for Cresselia to do just about anything in this matchup. Flamethrower after Flamethrower able to land and now able to grab a shield and the opponent can't really ever psycho cut down here oh the opponent goes for a grass knot bait oh no calling that grass knot bait is just insult to injury at this point oh my goodness the opponent they did lag in the middle of the game which is a bit unfortunate but at this point they're realizing there is not a win con and they resign the match Moving into the next match, picking up a great lead Turtonator into Cobalion. We see the save switch into the Drapion, answered by the Shadow Polyrath. Unless they have Sludge Bomb, they're completely walled here. They do actually have the Sludge Bomb, so Polyrath is going to commit a shield. Polyrath is also extremely good into the Cobalion as well. So preserving health in the Polyrath is quite nice. Polyrath shielded once to apply the debuff, and now is going to very comfortably no shield the Sludge Bomb and commit to the farm down. Polyrath exiting with energy. Opponent sends in the Cobalion, firing off very nice timing here once again, going for the Scald. The Scald connects, and we do see the attack drop. 
farm it up here with the Polyrath. Polyrath will be hit with the Sacred Sword. This is debuffed, but it is a Shadow Polyrath. The Polyrath able to withstand the damage, sending in Galissapod. In the back is Jellicent, and this is looking incredibly good, even down a shield, because Galissapod up energy is just so strong. Going for the Liquidation, trying to fish for a debuff. Unfortunately, the debuff is not to be. The opponent will land the Shadow Ball. That does some solid damage, but Jellicent can't really ever hex down here. Galissapod, it's definitely not bulky by any means, but I would honestly say it's not super glassy either. So it is able to tank that Shadow Ball pretty nicely. Unfortunately, that does mean that Jellicent can now fire off some Surfs. Going for Aerial Ace after Aerial Ace, peeling these shields away from the Jellicent. Jellicent is going to commit the final shield, trying for the catch. The catch, unfortunately, does not happen, but able to fire off the Icy Wind. The Icy Wind won't quite get the farm down here. In comes the Turtonator, and Turtonator is only going to be hit for neutral here. This Fire Dragon typing is really underrepresented in the current Open Ultra League meta. It's definitely cool to see the Turtonator in action. Picking up a tough lead in the next match, XL Turtonator into Greninja. We see the save switch into Galissapod. Galissapod without X Scissor, this is not a very comfortable matchup. Opponent goes for the Night Slash. Opponent is going to continue to farm, and they send in what looked to be a pure Psychic type, so my best guess is going to be Cresselia, but it's not Cresselia, it's an Armored Mewtwo. I haven't seen an Armored Mewtwo in a while, so definitely a bit of a surprise to see it here. But this is not bad for Galispod. Able to land multiple liquidations. Opponent is going to fire off energy, but we'll see a shield from the Galispod as it looks to potentially try and make a play for switch advantage. And Galispod does just that, committing to the farm down. Opponent sends in the Greninja. Greninja is about to be completely destroyed by this Polyrath, and the opponent shields the liquidation. They didn't know that the Galispod didn't have X Scissor, so they end up they end up double shielding. Oh man. This is really, really rough for the opponent. They end up double shielding their Greninja when the Greninja is completely useless in this game because there's a Polyrath. The Scald connects, in comes the Turdinator, and Turdinator just does not have to respect anything here. Opponent is going to be firing off the Shadow Ball. Turdinator just does not care getting the farm down. Opponent is going to see the writing on the wall and concede the match. Tough lead in the next match, Turtonator into Polyrath. We're going to see a safe switch into his own Polyrath. The opponent is staying in here. Due to the fact that switching takes a turn from the lead, the opponent is able to outpace by one turn, but they end up going for the Icy Wind. The opponent switches into his Skun Tank as the Scald is fired here, and this is definitely a surprise, as the Scald is way more valuable going into the Skun Tank than if it was thrown onto their Polyrath. So the opponent may have been better off staying in with the Polyrath to absorb the energy and then switching. They go for the Trailblaze, boosting up their attack, and the Polyrath does not care about the boosted attacks as it's able to fully counter down and win switch advantage. Polyrath leaves with a massive amount of energy, opponent forced to send in their own Polyrath to absorb the damage. Icy Wind is going to be shielded by the opponent, so they're looking to preserve some HP on the Polyrath. A Scald is going to connect, so the opponent... Honestly, I think they could have used their shields a bit better here, as in the back, we're now going to see Turtonator. So the opponent running a pretty classic team, which is going to be the Polyrath Double Dark Poison. They're going for Aqua Tails. Aqua Tail does hit for neutral here, but as we see, Exile Turtonator has some bulk to it. They're now going to fire off the Crunch. Turtonator still does not care. Opponent is firing off more energy. Turtonator at 100 energy, so it is going to have to throw right away here, and it is going to fire off the Flamethrower. Flamethrower will deal some pretty decent damage. Damage. opponent is going to commit the shield but they're not going to get to another aqua tail turtonator makes flamethrower number two that is going to pick up the knockout back in comes the polyrath polyrath just has nothing it can do here its energy is completely walled aerial ace gets the polyrath to a fractional hp remaining and it doesn't matter what move this is they go for the icy wind and that's just not gonna cut it as galissapod takes the win moving into the next match and this is another tough lead so this team encountering quite a lot of tough leads but it looks like the opponent does not have an amazing response to the Galissapod save switch as they switch out of the Guzzlord potentially fearing X Scissor but they choose to send in the Skeledurge and Skeledurge is taking a lot of damage from the Shadow Claws. We are going to see a no shield on the Disarming Voice and calling that it's only the Disarming Voice allows the Galissapod to make it to a liquidation and force both shields from the opponent. The opponent is going to get a big farm down here with the Skeledurge, but now, unfortunately, the game does not let them bring in the Turtonator for a little bit, but thankfully, the game figures it out, and in comes the Turtonator. Turtonator 
not doing a whole lot of damage with the incinerates. Getting a resisted farm down would be kind of nice, as of course a dragon pulse would be very threatening. So Turdinator going for it here, just cannot get the farm down. The Skeledurge on one HP, able to hang on, but leaving with 100 energy. In comes the Guzzlord, gonna switch into the Polyrath. In the back, it's Typhlosion. The opponent is core broken, and they resign the match. Picking up a positive lead in the next match, Turdinator into Alolan Ninetales. And the Ninetales is staying in here despite taking super effective damage from Incinerate. So it goes without saying, they probably have something in the back that isn't a big fan of Turdinator either. Turdinator is going to be shielding up the neutral weather ball, farming up two 100 energy, and going for the flamethrower. This will comfortably pick up the knockout. Opponent is just going to let that through. They send in Shadow Swampert. We're now going to see a pivot into the Galissapod, and in the back, the opponent, they have the Shadow Magnezone. Magnezone would take massive damage from the Liquidation, so we do see a shield by the opponent. I like the no shield here. Call the Mirror Shot, force them to go for the Wild Charge. They do go for the Wild Charge, but these Incinerates are about to add absolutely destroy this Magnezone. Choosing instead to send in the Polyrath. Polyrath unfortunately does get one turn bring in there, so it doesn't sneak through a counter as the opponent goes for the Wild Charge. Shadow Polyrath is going to get the farm down. Opponent sends in the Swampert, and as the Polyrath, this is absolutely the right play. Once you're here, and they only have one Pokemon left, just spam out Icy Winds. It's the guaranteed attack drop, and we see a switch into the Turdinator as the opponent fires off their energy. It's the Earthquake. The Turdinator looks like it may have been an undercharge there by the opponent because it was debuffed, but the Turdinator is able to now make it to a Dragon Pulse. The Dragon Pulse picks up the knockout and takes the win. Hopping into the next match, and Exile Turdinator is met with a pretty familiar lead as it's leading into Polyrath. And this is not a good spot to be in whatsoever, so we see the save switch into the Shadow Polyrath. Opponent is going to stay in, bank a bunch of energy, and then send in Cresselia. This is definitely not ideal. The Polyrath does have a big energy head start, but the opponent saved a bunch of energy on their Polyrath, and unfortunately, Scald doesn't do a lot to Cresselia here. Opponent goes for the Grass Knot. They're going to go for the Grass Knot plus the Farm Down play. Unfortunately, Lag denies the Scald. That's extremely unfortunate to see. These sets as a whole have definitely had its fair share of lag, but that's just really disheartening. And to add insult to injury, the Moonblast debuff, I believe that's either 10% or 12.5% chance of happening. Moonblast number two is going to connect. Going for the Dragon Pulse as the opponent gives up switch and sends in the Polyrath. Polyrath now going to be met with the Galissapod. Galissapod immediately met with the charge attack since the Polyrath banked quite a bit of energy and it is going to be the Icy Wind. Galissapod not wanting to get debuffed anymore. Going for this Aerial Ace right away. The Aerial Ace plus a Shadow Claw is going to pick up the knockout. In the back, it's Jellicent. This is definitely looking like a tough game with the Galissapod being debuffed, but but there is still play. Going for the liquidation, that's step one. Get the defense drop, and the opponent throws on alignment. Does the opponent go for the surf here? Calls the bait, it's the shadow ball, and unfortunately, that's gonna be game over. I like the play there of just trying to get whatever advantage you can, and calling a bait definitely could have opened the door to a potential win con, but unfortunately, it is not to be. Hopping into the final match, and what a terrific lead for Turdinator to end it, leading Turdinator into Virizion. Virizion going to get absolutely crushed by Incinerate, so we see the save switch into Shadow Ampharos, and the opponent is core broken by the Turdinator. Turdinator is going to be hit with a Brutal Swing. That's not going to be a problem for the Turdinator whatsoever, as it farms up and fires off the Flamethrower. The Flamethrower is going to be no-shielded by the opponent, and it picks up the knockout onto the Ampharos. They're not really going to want to send back in the Virizion, so they are going to send in Jellicent. Jellicent, this is definitely going to be a bit of a tricky endgame, as the Polyrath doesn't really have a tremendous amount of value. Gonna send in the Galissapod. Galissapod will be now hit with a Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball does quite a lot of damage. Oh, the opponent baited, and they do not want to continue playing out that game, and they immediately resign the match. Looks like the set ends in a 4-1. All in all, XL Turtonator looks to be a pretty cool pick for the Open Ultra League. It's definitely more on the side of anti-meta, but 
its unique coverage can catch some teams off guard. The tough thing is, is it's very, very difficult to get one because most of the time when Turnator is available, it's only in raids. So unless you're doing just a gigantic amount of raids or using Rare Candy XL, it's not the easiest Pokemon to actually get the XLs for. But I hope that we do have an event potentially down the road where, let's say, for example, they put it in the wild because getting an XL one of these would be a lot of fun as being able to just completely break some cores especially that Ampharos Verizian one does seem like quite fun. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.